So my story is also a Christmas story, and it's the story of when I was 21 years old and I was spending Christmas in Togo in West Africa. I was studying French at university, and it was a requirement of the course that you spend your third year abroad in a French-speaking country. And my university didn't really mind what I did during this year, so long as I was practicing actually speaking some French to some actual humans and not just reading surrealist poetry and lengthy 19th century novels, which is what I did the rest of the three years of my degree. And because at that age I was always up for an adventure, I decided that I wasn't going to go and be a language assistant in a school in France like so many of my peers were doing, and that I was going to go to Togo and I was going to volunteer for an NGO that worked with women and, uh, and that this was what I was going to do with my year abroad. And uh, truth be told, I wasn't really a lot of use to this NGO because while I might have gone there to speak French, it, I found out very quickly that a lot of the women that this organisation served did not actually speak French themselves. <laughs> so I worked in the office of a paralegal who gave advice to all these women who came with their very difficult problems, their violent marriages or their partners who'd left them and weren't paying child support and I was there doing data entry because that was the only thing I was any good at and I put all her records into the computer so that the organisation could make kind of computerised reports about the work that they were doing and the people that they were helping. And the first couple of months had been a bit shaky. Um, it had taken quite a while for the organisation to find something for me to do and it had taken me quite a while to find somewhere to live but by December I was settled in, I had these two colleagues at work, Priska and Melanie, and we used to have lunch together today, every day, and uh, the receptionist, Pierrette, she used to buy these romance comics and she used to lend me them to read over the weekends. Um, and I had these two housemates who sold espresso machines to all the high-end hotels and restaurants in the city. Um, so basically, all the time that I wasn't at work, I was mostly just in an over-caffeinated frenzy. Um, and, uh, and things were going pretty well. And here I was in December, getting ready to leave my placement and pack up all my stuff and go travelling in the new year. A friend of mine came out to visit from the UK and brought me some new books to read, some chocolate and some food treats that I'd been missing, and uh, some little Christmas presents for my family, and took home a lot of my excess stuff that I didn't want to have with me when I was backpacking and I was living out of my bag and didn't want to be burdened by all this extra stuff. And I'd known when I arranged this placement and this trip that I was going to be spending Christmas in Togo, and I was a little bit nervous about being away from my family from the first time for the first time but mostly i was really excited and really curious to experience christmas in this sunny tropical environment somewhere so different from the kind of snowy christmas card scene that i was used to from growing up not that it ever really looked like that in reality but that's the sort of the image um, and uh, i was really curious to learn lots of new christmas customs from my togolese friends and my french and german friends and uh, you know, I, I was ready for this new experience, and I was looking forward to it. But the one thing, the one thing I hadn't quite reckoned with, as I gave my friend this bag of stuff to take onto the plane away from me, uh, was that one of the possessions that I was giving them was my solar-powered wind-up radio that did long wave and FM and short wave, which was a going-away gift from my parents, who had given this to me basically so that they could send their firstborn child to roam across the world, safe in the knowledge that wherever I was, I would always, always be able to listen to the BBC. <laughs> <laughs> and the thought crossed my mind when I gave this radio to my friend that in giving this back to them, I wasn't going to be able to listen to the carol service from King's College, Cambridge on Christmas Eve, which is broadcast by the BBC every year, but I knew that my housemates had a stereo at home and it had a radio function and I was going to be fine. So I let it go and that was that. I'm going to back up here a bit uh, and explain that I'm a very keen choral singer and I come from an entire family of very keen choral singers. And for a lot of people, Christmas is about religion, or for some people it's about food, and for some people it's about spending time with family or giving and receiving gifts. and. For us, it is about a lot of those things, 
but it's also very much about the music. My parents both sing in their church choir and the highlight of the choral year is going to midnight mass on Christmas Eve. And when I was a child, I just thought it was so exciting to be up and awake as the clock ticked over to midnight onto the Christmas day, the very moment when Christmas started. And I couldn't wait until I was old enough to go with them and not have to stay at home with a babysitter with my younger brothers. And uh, the day came when I was old enough and I joined the choir with them and I joined my school choir and I sang in a youth choir and basically as far back as I can remember, December is essentially a heady jumble of carol services and concerts and going carol singing in village squares and shopping centres and old people's homes and all these things. And uh, after I, when I went to university, I joined my college choir there and Christmas was the one time of the year when being in choir was cool. Uh, the rest of the year it wasn't very cool at all, but at Christmas everyone wanted to come to the carol service and they would pack into the chapel and we'd get to sing to a full room of people uh, rather than like three people as we normally did. Um, and, uh, and then during Christmas dinner, which would happen afterwards, uh, we would all sing Christmas carols between all the courses and everyone would get up on their chairs and sing along very drunkenly. Um, and it was really great fun. And uh, you know, as a singer, singing is woven into the fabric of my life, but it's particularly woven into Christmas. Um, and so I came home from dropping my friend off at the airport, uh, and I said to my housemate, oh, uh, so is it going to be possible for me to get the stereo wired up so that I can listen to the radio tomorrow <coughs> to listen to this carol service? Um, which uh, is uh, something of a British institution. It's been broadcast every year since 1928 or something, and it, it goes out at three o'clock every year on Christmas Eve, and it opens with the solo choir boy singing Once in a Royal David City, and the choir and the congregation sing all of the classic traditional carols and some less familiar ones, and there's always a new one that's composed especially for the year. And in addition to all the singing that we do ourselves as a family, we always used to listen to this every year, and it's kind of like a, a bedrock, I suppose, of Christmas that we do together. And, uh, and so I'm really looking forward to being able to listen to this in, you know, this new environment where I was spending Christmas away from everybody that I knew. Um, and my husband looked at me and said, oh, I'm really sorry, uh, we don't actually have the cable for the stereo, so you're not going to be able to listen to the radio. I was like, okay, okay. I can deal with this and the next day I went out to the shops and I went to several different shops but none of them had the kind of cable that I needed and I tried several different places and I was just like this isn't gonna happen no no one is selling this thing I'm just gonna have to have to give up and, uh, and I was walking through the dusty streets of Lome and sort of breathing in this very hot humid air and all of these things that I've been really excited about before as kind of new exciting experiences of uh, spending Christmas somewhere tropical and doing Christmas dinner on Christmas Eve because I've had all these French and German friends uh, instead of on the 25th. I was kind of, you know, I didn't quite know if these were as exciting anymore uh, and, and maybe they were all just a bit weird and unfamiliar and I was a very, very long way from home. Um, and so I came back after this failed attempt to find a cable for the radio. Um, and I must have looked a bit down because my housemate asked me if I was okay. And I was like, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. I explained that, you know, I was okay. And I was, I was very excited to spend Christmas with them, but I was just feeling a little homesick right now. And I've been really hoping to listen to this thing on the radio. And I kind of surprised myself because I was actually quite close to tears. And I, I don't think I realized until that moment how important it was to me to have this part of my usual Christmas. Um, and I was quite surprised and my housemate looked at me and I think she realised at the same time how important it was to me as well. So um, she said, okay, don't worry, don't worry. Uh, just give me a minute, I'll see what I can do. And so she goes out of the room and I can hear her talking to someone on the phone and I'm, I'm trying to you know, get it together. And, um, and then after a while she comes back in and she says, okay, I've sorted it. Uh, our upstairs neighbours have a portable radio you can borrow, so uh, you know you'll be able to listen to it. So I ran, I hugged her. I was so excited, and I ran upstairs 
and I borrowed the, the radio off the neighbours and I came back downstairs and I went into my room and I tuned it into the BBC World Service just in time for the broadcast to start. Uh, and as I heard this solo choir boy singing the first verse of Once in Royal David City, I imagined my family sitting around the kitchen table at home and it just kind of anchored me a bit. Uh, and uh, I indulged myself, I had some 90 minutes of listening to all this traditional Christmas music that I knew from my childhood uh, and I came out excited again to spend Christmas in a tropical place with my friends. <laughs>